Stephen Packer here from the Dorset Golf and Country Club down in Dorset, England. I'm here today to try and help you with one of the most fundamental things in golf and that is consistent contact. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about where good contact comes from. I'm going to give you some drills and exercises to help improve your contact and together we're going to understand the formula that you need to help improve the strike and the consistency and help you play some better golf. So what are the pieces that influence where the club hits the ground and how the club hits the ball? What we're going to do is we're going to separate them and talk about them one at a time so that we can really understand how they influence how the club hits the ground and how we can go about changing them. So the first one we're going to discuss is, in my opinion at least, the major piece which really affects where the club hits the ground and that is your body. So long story short, wherever your body is, is roughly where the club is going to come in contact with the ground. Reason being, if you imagine the golf swing is a circular motion, the club head moves around the body in a circle, and the body's sort of center, as it were, is the spine. I'm not talking about the center of the golf swing, just the body center tends to be the, the spine. So if you imagine this is almost the hub, and this is the wheel, and the wheel just turns around the hub. So wherever the hub tends to be, wherever the axle is, that's where the tire hits the road. So wherever our hub is, that's where our golf club is going to hit the floor. So if my body is favoring my rear foot, my club's very much going to tend to hit the ground near my rear foot. If my body's over my lead foot, my club's going to hit the ground more by my lead foot. And obviously body in the middle, club in the middle. So we can really see how the body's position really influences the low point in the golf swing and where that club comes in contact with the ball. So if we have got a problem with contact, the first place that I tend to look is always how the body's moving. Is the body too far back as we're coming into impact? Is the body backing up? Is the body moving off? Those are the main things, the main causes I tend to see for the club hitting the ground in the wrong place. It's not the only reason, as we're about to find out, but it is probably the main contributor to hitting the, the ground in the wrong place and therefore misstriking the ball. So let's talk about the second main contributor to striking the ground in the wrong place and what controls where the club strikes the ground. It's going to be our arms and our wrists, okay? So if you imagine back to my wheel analogy, we've got our, our hub, we've got our tyre, the club's moving around in a circular motion. What keeps the wheel, or any wheel, the same shape all the way around? It is the spokes. So the spokes of our our golf swing are our arms. If we bend our arms, we change the shape of our golf swing, we change the width of our golf swing, and that creates problems with contact. So effectively, if we come into impact and our arms start to buckle, what tends to happen is we hit the ground earlier. If our arms stay straighter, we hit the ground later. So the the shape of our arms and the structure of our arms and also as an extension the structure of our wrists because again we can create bigger reach with our wrists as we come down and that can cause us to hit the ground in the wrong place so the structure of our wrists the structure of our arms they are the second biggest contributor to where to affecting where the club hits the ground and how you strike the ball so really what we're saying is the straighter your arms and the flatter your wrist the more you're going to control where the club hits the ground, the more bent your arms and the more bent your wrist, the more you're going to find it very, very hard to hit the ground in the same place every time. Typically, you're going to find you'll hit the ground early rather than where the ball is. Um, and that would be the second place to look really when trying to understand what your contact problem is. So the third and final element that can really affect where the club hits the ground is your swing path. Um, and in my world, really more like swing direction. Um, we all know that the, the club path is affected by many, many things. And one of the big contributors is your swing's direction. So effectively, if we're talking about a swing which is swinging over and across, obviously our golf swing, ideally, 
we want it swinging at the target. So we know that in reality that doesn't really happen. A lot of people, uh, almost everyone will have a slight bias, swinging slightly across or swinging out to the right. And some players even amend that depending on the club they've got in their hands. But effectively what you're gonna find is a swing that comes over and across and swings to the left for a right-handed golfer. So you'd say a slicing swing or an out to in swing for a, for a path that would create. Um, we would find that a swing that comes over and across will hit the ground later. So as you can see, as I'm swinging over and across, I'm hitting the ground much nearer my front foot. So if I swing over and across, I will hit the ground later. If I swing too far under, so if the club comes too far under, what you'll tend to find is you'll hit the ground earlier, okay? So your swing's direction can really, really affect where the club hits the ground. I would say this is possibly the least common problem that I tend to find um, with regards to why you'd hit the ground in the wrong place. I'm not saying that it won't be there, but as a, as a main issue for contact, tends not to be the problem. Um, most of the time, you're gonna be looking at where your body is, okay, and where your arms and wrists are structured with your body. And those would be the places to look if you really wanted to get on top of the contact problem. Now, there are lots of things which will help you achieve those three elements, but effectively, it will all boil, all boil down to those three things going wrong if your contact is poor. Okay, so let's just talk about some drills that we could do to really help with uh, contact, improving contact, because although now you know that it's where your body is, it's how your arms are structured, and it's the direction that you're swinging that will primarily affect where the club hits the ground, how do you go about changing those pieces? So that information itself is absolutely worthless, really, without understanding how you can apply it. So hopefully what I'm gonna do here is give you some really simple ways of how to apply some of that information uh, in a practical way to help you hit the golf ball better. So one of my favorite drills, talking about body position to start with, would be a stepping drill. And uh, this is one that's been promoted by some of the world's leading biomechanists, uh, Dr. Kwon, uh, for one of them, who's promoted this, uh, this drill, not just for contact by all accounts, but also efficiency and movement. We're gonna do a, a stepping drill. So what we're gonna do is get set up to a ball with a very, very narrow start, and the ball's gonna be sitting somewhere just outside your lead foot. What you're gonna do is take a normal backswing, okay, normal backswing, and then at the top of the swing, we're gonna start the downswing with a step, okay, so I call this swing, step and hit for really hopefully obvious reasons. We're gonna swing back, we're gonna step, and we're gonna hit. And hopefully you can see what that does to my body is it really gets my body moving forwards. It drives my weight down into my lead foot and it helps me to get through the ball with my body and help my body cover the ball, which is a very common thing that you, that you hear. And we all know why now that we need to cover the ball with our body and have that feeling of covering the ball. It's so that the center of our golf swing gets on top of the ball so that our club hits the ground where our ball is, which is exactly where we want it to. So swing, step and hit, really, really great drill for helping you improve your contact when you need to improve how your body moves. Another great drill for working on your body movement is what I would call the one-legged drill. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up to the ball, but instead of a normal stance width, what we're gonna do is make a very narrow stance, and we're going to draw that rear foot back so that it's resting just on the toe, okay? Now, the whole goal of this exercise and this, this drill is to help you to turn and twist in your backswing, staying in one spot. So this is to stop anybody that really shifts their body off on the way back. You know, we're gonna create a really nice central pivot here by putting all of our weight on our front foot, dropping our rear foot back, and learning how to hit golf balls, not only turning in one spot, but also staying very balanced. So this is a great drill for both of those things. It's not really there for a power exercise, so if anything, it might just reduce your power a touch, but what it's gonna teach you yeah. is how to control your body and therefore how to start controlling 
the low point of your golf swing so that you can hit the ground more in the same spot, more by the ball every time. So anybody that moves off too much, too much movement, this one-legged drill is going to be absolutely fantastic for you to have a go at. Okay, so talking about the structure of the arms, here's a really, really good drill for working on keeping that left arm nice and straight and that left wrist nice and firm, or that lead wrist nice and firm. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a drill stick, okay, everyone should have one of these, fantastic for practicing with, really, really important to have in your bag, not just for alignment, but for other drills too, and I'm just about to show you this one. What we're going to do is we're going to get the stick, we're just going to grip it down the back of our grip here, okay, in our fingers, hopefully you can see here, just literally gripped it down the back of my grip here, and so it's now in my fingers. And where that's going to sit is just to the side of my body, just uh, my lead side. Now, effectively, what we're going to do from there is we're going to first of all start off by chipping golf balls. And we're going to learn to chip the ball, okay? But this stick here, what it's going to do is it's going to indicate pretty quickly whether your wrist is staying firm. And if the wrist stays firm, that stick isn't going to bother you in the slightest and it's just going to stay by your side. If you are breaking down your wrist or breaking down your arms, what you're gonna find is very quickly that this stick gives you some feedback by giving you a little tap on the side. Now, what you're gonna to start to learn through this feedback is what a good wrist position and arm position feels like through impact and what a bad one feels like. And the feedback is gonna be very, very instant. So I would start off just by hitting some small shots just trying to keep that stick by your side. You can almost consider it chipping if you wanted to. Once you feel like you've got chipping under your belt, you can go to maybe a half swing, okay, where your left arm's parallel to the floor. And we're just gonna, again, hit some shots away and get used to that stick staying by, by your side rather than hitting you. And then once you feel like you've got there, you can actually take it to a full golf swing. Okay, and that's something that might take a little bit of time. Um, retraining this wrist if you are a bit of an early thrower, or if you are a little bit of an arm, an arm flexor, it's gonna be quite a tough thing to get at the start, but very quickly, with a bit of work using this stick underneath your grip and your fingers, you will find how to control that lead wrist and control that lead arm far, far better, and it will lead to crisper golf shots. So have a little go with the stick, give yourself a chance by starting off with a chip shot and then turn it into a pitch and then turn it into a full swing. Really great drill used by many. Um, there are practice aids out there for it. Um, you know, instead of using a stick, you can actually buy a tall rotation stick, which Tommy Fleetwood uses, and that just basically clamps on the, the end of your club. Um, or if you've got an old club, what you can do is you can shove one of these drill sticks down the grip end and have it sticking out the top and that way you can just grip the grip a little bit more normally. So a few options there on how to do it, but stick down the back of the grip works for me, uh, and it's a great drill for working on that arm structure and that wrist structure. Here's another really fantastic drill for working on your contact, and this is something that you can do from home. Very much a positional type of exercise. This is not a, uh, an exercise where we're gonna be hitting golf balls. So this is something that's really, really, really great to do from home to help you feel the right positions. And also you could actually do this on the driving range in between shots if you really wanted to just create that feel or, or replicate the feel that you're looking to, to generate. So everyone should hopefully have one of these at home. Um, it's a resistance band. These have become very, very popular for home exercise and fitness basically used for stretching, okay, or for actually working out because the bands create a resistance. The great thing is these bands come in all different types of resistance, so you can definitely find one suitable for your fitness level and for how your body feels. So don't be scared of, of using one of these. Um, what we're gonna do is we're basically going to use this band to give us feedback very, very quickly about how our body's moving um, and obviously our body, one of the main contributors to uh, changing where the club hits the floor, we're also going to use it to help us with the structure of our arms. So again, another big contributor to how that club hits the floor. So what we're gonna do effectively is we're going to trap one part of the resistance band underneath our rear foot. 
we're going to wrap the other end around our grip so that we can take our grip on top of that band that we've just wrapped around. And what we're going to do is we're going to get set up normally in our golf swing posture. We're going to get our rear elbow, we're going to put it into our hip like this, and that's going to basically be our starting point for our drill. From there, what we're going to do is we're going to push forwards, keeping our elbow into our side, keeping our foot on the band, and the goal is to get the band to stretch as horizontally as possible. So just so you can see from this side, I'm going to get into my setup, pull my elbow into my hip, and my hip's going to move a little bit forwards to meet it. Then what I'm going to do is keeping my elbow on my hip, I'm going to push forwards as far as I can, okay? Keeping my elbow on my hip, I'm going to push forwards as far as I can and get that band to feel as, like it's going as horizontally as possible. Now, as you can see, that's really made the structure of my arm really, really solid. Very important that our rear elbow is bent and our lead arm is straight as we're hitting a golf ball. Reason being, primarily, it's this rear arm that will control this wrist and this elbow. And if this rear arm fires, what will tend to happen is this elbow will start to bend. So as my right arm fires, my left wrist bends, my left elbow bends. So if my rear elbow, my right elbow for me, stays into my body, what I'm gonna do is find my, my, my lead arm, and my lead wrist will be very, very stable and solid through the hitting zone, which will create a very consistent point that I will contact on the floor every time. So this is a fantastic exercise for working on two of the major elements that we need to, to actually control our contact. That's our body position, which we're obviously working on by trying to push and move forwards. And also our arm structure, the spokes of our wheel. We're gonna really work on those becoming better by keeping this rear arm bent, keeping this arm straight, keeping that wrist straight, and really trying to push the band and the club as far forwards as possible. So this is a great drill that will help uh, give you the right feelings for your impact and your follow through. They'll give you a fantastic feeling for your body alignments as you're coming through impact. And this is something which you can practice over and over again, just pushing forwards and up, forwards and up, so that you can really groove in that feeling of that body being forwards, this arm being straight, this wrist being flat, and this elbow staying very, very solid for your body. So I really hope that you can do a little bit of work with your resistance band, really, really good piece of kit for feedback, and it will really help you groove in that great position for your body, for your elbow, um, from the comfort of your, of your own home. One of the things that we need to look at now for contact is probably your club face attachment. Now, this is something which is very, very interesting. It's a, um, a, a very, complex really part of the golf swing but it's about matching the way that you grip the club with how you release the club. Now most of the time I tend to find people who struggle with contact tend to have too strong a grip uh, for their body and for the way that they, they maybe can move. Now the problem is when you have too strong a grip which is when your lead hand is turned all the way around onto the side where you can see all the knuckles on top what you'll find is that will close the club face. Now what we have to do with a closed club face is we have to add loft somehow. Our body's favourite way of adding loft, and it does it in two ways really, is it likes to move the body back and it likes to bend the wrist. And in moving your body back and bending your wrist, what we start to do is launch the ball higher in the air. The problem with that is though, as we, we know now, is when our body moves back, we tend to hit the ground further back. If our wrist breaks, we tend to hit the ground earlier as well. So a strong grip can contribute obviously in two ways to um, hitting the ground in a very inconsistent way or, or much too far back. So what you could do is you could experiment obviously with trying to weaken your lead hand if you are someone that really struggles with contact, making sure that the hand attaches, basically speaking, where you can see sort of two knuckles at the front. So instead of gripping all the way around like this on the side, where we can see all the knuckles on the top of the wrist, what we can do is try and get the thumb a little bit more down the grip, okay, rather than on the side of the grip, and having the thumb more down the grip, okay, is gonna make the face a little bit weaker. 
Now, you're gonna to have to do a little bit of work on your technique, the way you release the club to match with that, but that will then put you in a position where you've got some loft on the face. You now no longer have to fall back and flex your wrist to add some loft, and you can actually then start to move into the ball. So what release pattern will help with a new grip like that where we've had to weaken it a little bit? Well, I call this a bit of a turn down release because what we're trying to do is turn down the, the grip and the wrist and turn down the loft into the back of the ball to create a better strike. What's interesting is a downward and a, a, a shutting club, okay, a club that's, that's trying to close into impact is a downward moving club. So what I mean by that is when a face is open, if we try and shut the face, we can see how a shutting face actually moves downwards into the ball, which is actually really good for when it comes to getting a consistent strike. If the face is shut coming into the ball and we're trying to add loft, what we can see here is adding loft from a shut face is actually an upward moving uh, motion, which as we know, if the club's on its way up as we're hitting, we're gonna struggle to make that consistent contact again. So effectively, a weaker grip tends to help you to shut the face in, coming into impact, which means the club will be moving down and into the ball, and you can get a really nice strike on the mat. So this is a drill that will help you with that, okay? Help you get a nice crisp strike into the mat and help you maybe deal with a little bit of a grip change that I'm gonna suggest. So what we're gonna do is obviously make that grip change where the thumb, the, the lead thumb is a bit more down the flat of the, the front of the grip rather than on the side, only seeing about one or two knuckles. What we're gonna do is take the club back halfway so that the club is roughly parallel to my feet and the toe of the club is pointing more up in the air. And what we're gonna do from there is we're gonna to learn to turn our wrist down into the ball, okay? So we're gonna to start to work on turning our wrist down into our ball, we're flexing our wrist over, and that's going to really help hit into the ground where the ball is, okay? So we're effectively toe pointing to the sky, and now what I'm gonna do is turn my wrist down into the mat, and we can hear, because of that, we're creating this lovely strike. So that is something that I really want you to have a go at. If your contact is really bad and you're struggling with your contact, you've tried getting your body more forward, you struggle with that, you've tried getting some structure in your arms and you've struggled with that, the culprit is likely to be your grip. We need to weaken it, we need to work on turning your wrist down into impact and that will really start to help you make some consistent contact with the ball. So if you do play golf with a strong attachment, a strong grip, with your knuckles all the way around to the side, and it's something that's a bit non-negotiable, something that you, you don't really want to change, there are ways around playing golf with a strong grip and being able to get consistent contact. So what I'm going to offer you here is a drill that will really help you to use this strong grip in a way that will allow the control of the club, allow you to hit the ground in the right place, and it boils down to understanding a couple of things that occur. So effectively, the problem with having too strong a grip typically is your body tries to add loft. It does this by backing up. It does this by breaking your arms. What we need to understand is backing up isn't the best thing at all for contact. What we need to do is learn to stabilize our body. But the big problem is we get our body more forwards, but we need to do something about this club face. We've got to stop it from being so shut, we need to give it some loft. Um, the only way we can do that is by learning how to extend properly in the follow through and throw, which is a, a movement that's demonstrated by all the greatest golfers that play golf with a strong grip. So here's a great drill that you can do to help work that piece in to your golf uh, and make sure that it doesn't actually affect your contact in that negative way. So what we're gonna do is get set up in a way where we're going to drop our rear foot back, not too far, maybe a foot, a foot sort of a length backwards, and we're going to put all of our weight into our lead foot. We're going to really flex this lead knee over the lead toe. So it's going to look something like this from face on. I've got my knee pushed out over my lead toe. I've got this other foot dropped back, okay, and I'm very much weighted on my lead side. Now what we're going to do from here is we're going to learn that we're going to probably have to restrict our swing a little bit because I'm so loaded here. I'm not going to be able to get all the way up to the top. 
that's not a problem because what we're learning to do is we're learning to keep our body stable, so not fall back, and we're learning to push up into a finish, which is something a lot, a lot of strong golfers don't do. They tend to fall back and they tend to be flexed over in the finish. So really good thing to do. So we're gonna work on trying to push off this lead knee as we come through impact, we're gonna push up, but we're not just gonna do that. We've got to push up and then we've gotta do something about this loft. So we've got this strong grip, okay, which tends to get my hands quite far ahead anyway. So we don't need to worry so much about our left wrist alignment. What we've got to try and do is try and match up some loft and the face direction. So we're gonna load this lead knee and we're going to aim to swing about halfway back. We're gonna push up and throw our wrist. We're gonna really try and work on throwing our wrist past us and we're gonna try and flex our wrist on the way through. So instead, of, extend our wrist on the way through. So instead of flexing our wrist, which is what we've been working on, what we're going to do is extend our wrist. And this is only if you've got that sort of non-negotiable, strong lead hand that you don't wanna change, that you feel you can't change. The only way we're gonna be able to deal with it is understanding that we need to extend and we need to throw. And this drill will really help you control your contact. It's gonna really help you get some nice flight on the ball and get some speed. So just to recap, foot drop back, load the weight into the lead knee and lead toe, leave the grip strong if you want, halfway back, push up and throw that wrist out. And you should see some really great loft on your shots. You should see some really consistent strikes on the floor and it should really help you control the low point of your golf swing. So here's an example of that release pattern that we've just discussed. This is Dustin Johnson, definitely has a stronger grip and we can see here he's using that very release pattern that we've just described. Now, as we zoom in here, we can see that left wrist is bowed over. What he then does is continue to release that towards the target into that extended and cupped position, and that adds the loft and launches the ball at the right angle for him. Thank you for joining me for my uh, video helping you control how you contact the ball and where the club contacts the floor. I hope I've given you some great ideas in how to strike the ball better, how to work on your contact. And a lot of these ideas I've given you are not just for beginning golfers or intermediate golfers. A lot of advanced golfers struggle with the points that I've talked about here in this video. And I know that if you work on this, you can really supercharge your strike. You can play golf to a completely different standard because strike is a fundamental. And without consistent strike, we can't predict the direction. We can't predict the length. It really does change the way that we can play the game. So work on your strike, improve that contact with some of those drills, and you'll see some great benefits moving forward for your golf. Many thanks.